Okay, so continuing on from part one of the base forms, um, we spoke about essentially how we can set up, how we can modify, and essentially resolution. So this was two examples of two cubes. We can finish our form, brings us back to our standardized modeling space. Anytime we want to, we can come back and we can edit the feature. It will let us back in and you can see that essentially we can see all that definition again, okay? And from there, we can edit the form and it brings us right back in. We get all that control back, okay? So once you've stepped out, you'll notice that it goes to a much smoother sort of form. We have a little bit of um, topography sort of line work, but otherwise... Um, we get sort of like a generalized overview of the form, okay? So if we're having a look in here, all right, and I'll go, okay, I'm going to have a look at some of our other options. Um, cylinder works in much the same way as the box. The only thing to notice is that the cylinder is hollow, okay? Uh, we can see here that I have these modifiers again, which will define how many... Um, faces essentially it's going to have but the thing to realize is the cylinder okay is it's just a surface okay it's not a solid form if I finish that form okay you can see compared to this it's a solid block okay this guy however is just a um, it's just a surface okay um, and that comes into play later so if you model something like this and you don't essentially thicken it, turn it into something, um, it'll forever be a surface and that will cause havoc for you down the track if you try to 3D print something um, because essentially it's dimensionless um, in, its, in terms of its thickness, okay? So I've got myself a cylinder there. Um, sphere is the next one and the sphere again operates in the same sort of way if we go really low poly or low face I should say you can see that it actually changes shape all right um, but you can see again modifying um, that I have the same sorts of control that I had previously okay and I can really quickly start to form things and also break things and <laughs> look really bad really fast, okay? And you can see in this example that it is essentially, um, that form is broken because I um, had such a few number of faces on it, okay? Unlikely that you're gonna do that usually, all right? Um, but again, you'll have the options to then come through and actually thicken your object down the track. So if I grab this, you can see that I've actually created a thickness to that object. Now that is something that I can actually work with on a 3D printer. A 3D printer now could print this form, okay? And similar, or same, I should say, with this guy. I actually get the option there to thicken. Um, you can see that if you've got a surface that's been generated with freeform, you can quickly thicken it, give it dimension, okay? And that's really important. Um, so you can see, with these, um, really quickly, I'm starting to build these form shapes up, okay? I'm starting to do... Um, work on them and starting to get a result. An example that I want to show you now, okay, is we're going to combine a couple of shapes together, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with our um, torus, which is this shape here, okay? And this is going to be quite good because this is essentially going to... Um, generate a shape like we would with a revolve, okay? So instead of parametric mo modeling, um, drawing the circle profile and then having a point out here and revolving around, I can just you know, create that form in a couple of clicks. 
Now, what I'm going to do with this guy, so I'm just going to be a bit careful about the way I set it up. I want nine faces around, and I want five faces, sorry, nine faces around the diameter and five faces around the, um, essentially the form of the object, okay? So I'm really interested in having essentially some faces here that are symmetrical top and bottom. So I've created that form, okay, and that looks good. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna create a cylinder. And that cylinder is gonna go in the center. And with this guy, I'm so worried about the diameter, but I wanna make sure I've just got three sets of faces vertically, okay? So we can see that we've got our torus and our cylinder. And I'm just gonna to have to step back into the feature because you can see it disappeared. I, I finished one step down. And I'm gonna try my first modifier, okay? And the modifier that I'm really interested in using here is called bridge. So I come in and I select bridge, okay? And bridge is essentially gonna let me join these two objects together. You would have seen this in the Autodesk tutorials, which you've hopefully done, um, when they were working with the flat forms and bridging together. You can also bridge solid shapes together. So I'm gonna bridge this to this. So I grab my first face, you can see side one, side two, switch over and I'm going to grab that one because it's opposite and you can see if it doesn't preview click that for the preview that it is essentially giving me an idea of what's happening something's going to go across now before I hit go looking at this to my eyes it doesn't look good I've got this vertex is trying to join to there that one's going there which seems reasonable but then that low one there is going there it's a mess okay I'm going to get a really bad bridge with this what I want to do is I want to get that and that aligned somehow relatively. Okay, we can see that the bridge is still messed up. If I click it again, the arrow changes direction. Okay, and suddenly my bridge is starting to look a lot more cohesive. Okay, so that's good. And you can see but I've now managed to bridge from my cylinder across to my torus. And the T-spline's doing a really nice job of forming these shapes. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll do another bridge. Okay. And we'll play around with it a little bit. Go there. And we'll go there. Same thing. We just want to make sure it's aligning on the top corner there, so get that on the top corner there, running downwards, much better, much better, okay, and we start to build these really nice bridging shapes to bring the whole kit and caboodle together. Okay. Unfortunately, it's not quite symmetrical because I haven't got enough faces in the internal of this cylinder. So it's really important if you're trying, you know, to, to essentially plan along as you go. So think about, okay, I want this to be symmetrical. I'm going to have three spokes, essentially, that are going to run across. So how do I want this to work? How do I want it to look um, and think symmetrically um, in this case? would have made a big difference. But we get the sense of it. On this side, we've got a nice bridge happening and they're relating well. This is symmetrical. You can see that we've got two faces in there. We've got two faces in here, okay? So I'm quite happy with it on that side. Again, if I come into the edit form, okay, we can see that I can grab sections. I can actually start to shift them and move them around. Notice that there's quite a bit of deformation happening over here, so I no longer have a nice round sort of object. I'm starting to throw things into a bit of disarray. But the important thing to understand is that through modification, you can repair things. Okay.
or you can optimize and customize is probably more, more effective use. Okay. And you can see in this example, I'm just working quite slowly and methodically. Okay. I haven't got isn't beautifully symmetrical, but it's actually, you know, it's starting to actually come together and look a lot better than it did. And for the purposes of this course, that's probably going to be okay for a lot of your work. Okay? I mean, not that I'm saying near enough is good enough, um, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, for freeforming stuff, you know, it is a sculptural sort of headspace that you're working in. Okay? Um, the important thing to note with this is that, say if this was to be mounted up, um, or I was to come in and want to thicken this object, okay, the key is that that initial cylinder that I had, okay, I've thickened off that, that has remained unchanged. And so if this was to then fit into another component here, I haven't upset the geometry of that when I was working. Okay, it was only these surfaces here that I was playing with, not relating to anything that's potentially going to fit to something else later. Okay, but I'm actually starting to be quite happy with that. I've actually managed to get that bridge to look quite good through a combination of setting up the model correctly, but then making modifications to it. The key with bridge is always to check where it's referencing to. You could say, see when I was referencing before, I was being really careful to make sure, okay, I'm bridging a face to a face, make sure that the registration point matches as best I can.